This is Janine Bresner at AST20's Fab Lab in Providence, Rhode Island, and I'm going to show you uh, my method of soldering. Here is a step response board that was mostly stuffed, cut out on the Modella here in the lab. Well, this is how these pin headers are uh, shipped, and I needed six pins. It's difficult to solder this on the top of the board. Now, I drilled some holes in it to make it a through hole board, but still, if I mount the pins in the holes, because of the plastic spacers, can't access the board to solder directly on that surface. So before I soldered the board, the pin header on the underside of the board, so that I could have just the pins sticking up through here, but then um, the pins would all be reversed when I went to program it. So. My solution was to push the plastic piece far down to the bottoms of the pins and I'm going to thread that all through from the underside of the board. Because I drilled these holes by hand, they're not all perfectly lined up. So I needed to bend the pins just a little bit to make everything fit through the holes, like so. So I'm, you can see, I'm pushing this from below the board up through and I'm going to solder these in place. My method for soldering is to cut a lot of really really small pieces. This is what I've done so far. My soldering experience began with silver and silver smithing. So with that I would cut tiny pieces of solder and put it right on the joint that I was trying to solder. And I would heat that with a torch. This is different, but still I like using this technique because I find that it's very neat. Uh, I can control how much solder is flowing and uh, I don't necessarily get big gobs and need to wick them away with uh, the copper braided wire wick. To These are the tools that I'm using. These are the tools that I'm using. <laughs> So I'm going to cut teeny tiny, teeny tiny pieces of solder. It's easier if the board is level, but because I've already soldered these components on the underside, the board isn't sitting exactly level. I'm just going to take this pin header over here to act as a crutch and support the other side of the board. I've got these little pieces of solder that I've cut. And I'm going to pick up a tiny piece of solder and I place it right right next to the pin where I'll be soldering the hot soldering iron and here I already have one small piece of solder situated right next to that pin and I am going to I just flowed the solder, but I am heating the pin, and the solder flowed around this one pin so far, which you can see. So, if I've got a really stable base to put down all the pieces at once, and then just solder them all in a row. And if I'm applying a... Usually I don't do through hole stuff, I just do surface mount stuff and this is a lot easier because I can put down all the pieces of solder, put my component on the top, and I also find it useful to, sometimes before placing the pieces of solder, I might take a pair of pliers or tweezers, but with pliers I can apply a lot more pressure, and I'll squish the little cut wires of solder so that it's flatter and it'll sit on the surface really evenly. Then I can put a component on top, like a microcontroller that has a lot of little legs, and just apply the tip of the soldering iron to each of the legs and I go down one side at a time, hit all of the pins and it will sort of sink down on one side and then sink down on the other side and it'll stick to the board. I find this to be easier than just holding the wire and trying to hold the board and trying to hold the soldering iron. And this frees up another function of my fingers and I get to be a bit more precise in doing it. This is my technique for soldering. This is Janine Bresser and I'm recording from the Fab Lab at AS20 in Providence, Rhode Island.
It is a beautiful sunny day today, this March 18, 2010.